Any, any superstitions going into the game? Any special thing you carried into the game on Sunday that you had tucked away somewhere? Uh, I did. <laughs> I always, um, you know, I've learned a lot from my wife over the years. And she's so about the power of intention, you know, and believing things that are really going to happen. And she always makes a little altar for me at the game because she, she just wills it so much. And uh, so she put together a little altar for me that I could bring with pictures of my kids. And I have these little special stones and healing stones and protection stones. And she has me wear a necklace and take these drops she makes. And I say all these mantras. <laughs> and I stopped it, questioning her a long works. time ago. I did. I just shut up and listen. And at first I was like, this is kind of crazy. And then... About four years ago, we were playing the Seahawks, and she said, you better listen to me. This is your year, but this is all the things you're going to have to do to win. And I did all those things, and by God, you don't work. It was pretty good. <laughs> and then in 2015, it was about early January, and she said, you know how much I love you? And I said, yeah. And she said, I just want to let you know this is not going to be your year. Oh. And of course, we lost. I said, what does 16 look like? <laughs> and she said, 16 is going to be your year. <laughs> so it was early January this year, and I said, babe, I asking, like, do we have a chance? And she said, yeah, but you're going to have to do a lot of work and you're really going to have to listen to me. <laughs> so, man, I listened to her. And right so, after the game, she said, see, I did a lot of work. You do your work, I do mine. She said, you're lucky you married a witch. I'm just a good witch. <laughs> Hold on, let me explain something to them real quick. Before everybody starts screaming and saying, oh, like I told y'all earlier, you motherfuckers have entered the rapture. And if ain't nobody flying up to heaven right now, obviously all y'all motherfuckers going to hell. Right with me. So, let's get it. Oh, you already here. I'm so sorry. You can't get out. You're stuck. It's over. You heard the song a million times and you didn't even know. That's fucked up. But I still love you anyway, though. It's okay. It's whatever. You still love me? You do? That's why I love you, because you don't judge me. I love you. And turn it into something positive, and to, to at least have a good life. I at least, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna die or ever be a sacrifice, I want to make sure that my life made at least five million kids happy, or they found some sort of answers or resolve in my life, regardless of the negative around my name, regardless of of the bad things people say to me. I don't give a fuck because I know my goal in the end, and I know what I want for everyone, and I know what my message is. So I just wanted to say, I appreciate and love all of you. And of course, Rihanna is in the building. Hey, Angie. Through, through. <laughs> I cannot believe it's been so long that we I have know. done this. You know, I am misunderstood a lot uh, at times. Uh, my music, my image, people have their whole uh, their whole thing about me, whether it be a d me being a devil worshiper or whatever. Besides them reading into my hand over my eye on my album cover. <laughs> Why is your hand over your eye? Because I'm, I'm a devil worshiper. What are you talking about? I ain't know you ain't see the bees, babe. I'm sorry, babe. This them bitches right here. I ain't know. BWA, you heard me? Oh, you see them bees, huh? Yeah, you know, I'm labeled a heathen. You know. I've been in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get tired, boo. Love you. You stupid bitch. You talking about my beads. Devil worshiping beads. Cool. You hear me? But if you're a Christian, your Bible says you're supposed to love God, your neighbor as yourself, and your enemy. So if you, you're commanded to love me if I want to serve the devil. Are you a hypocrite? Which one? See, we live in a superficial realm that worships money. But go back in history. The most powerful men, the most powerful women on earth were people that believed in something greater than themselves. They could not be bought. They could not be persuaded. Something to think about. You were both in Skull and Bone, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go on. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the website. Number 322? <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all, he's not the nominee. And, uh, but, uh, look, I look for... Are you prepared to lose? No, I'm not going to lose. You both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs>
Is there a secret handshake? Is there a secret code? I wish there were something secret I could manifest. 322, a secret number? Uh, there are all kinds of secrets, Tim, but one thing is not a secret. I disagree with this president's direction that he's taking the country. We can do a better job, and I intend to do it. And we'll be watching. Be safe on the campaign trail. John Kerry, thanks yes, for joining us. And we'll be right back.